But the thing is this. I have, when I have talked about non-dual Vedanta for um, the last few years I've been teaching here, one common question which I come up against is this. Swami, I listened to the talks. I read the books. And I understand it too. But what do I do now? What's next? This is one form of the question. The other form of the question is, I understand what you are saying, Swami. But my life is not changing. I'm still suffering. I'm still the same person. How do I realize this? If you ask that question, then... Advaita Vedanta has not worked for you. Don't even, you're not even supposed to ask that question. You're supposed to, the pointers are supposed to be enough for us to awaken. Now what will happen if you go to a non-dualist, an Advaitin teacher, the pure, strict non-dualist teacher, and say this? You know what the answer is? The answer is, the method is hearing, med uh, reflecting, and meditating. Shravana, Manana, and Nididhyasana. It's not working. Not working. Repeat. <laughs> I've been repeating 30 years, 40 years. Better luck next life. <laughs> I actually heard a, a great teacher, uh, a contemporary non-dualist teacher. He said this. Because there is no other way in, in, the, in the strict, monastic, advaitic, non-dual Vedanta. The truth is here. It's being told to us. We listen to it. We argue it out if you have got doubts. And we try to settle down on it. Not working. Keep trying. Not working. Next life. There are many lives ahead of you. Now, in Kashmiri Shaivism, what they will do is, the way of Shiva, not working. Okay, step down. Take the help of the Divine Mother, Shakti. How does it work? What is the problem? Why does the way of Shiva not lead to enlightenment? Why does non-dual Vedanta, why does it not work instantaneously? It should work instantaneously. One of the attractions of the non-dual path is that it seems, I will say within quotes, it seems to be effortless instantaneous and who doesn't want an effortless and instantaneous way but doesn't seem to work so why does it not work they analyze it in Kashmir Kashmiri Shaivism they will not say better luck next time said yes we have something more for you they'll open another drawer and take out something else here is something for you now as we go from the way of Shiva to the way of the Divine Mother it will seem to become much more complicated remember the truth is not complicated we are complicated so our problems are complicated and therefore the solutions also become more and more complicated. The way of Shiva, simple and direct. The way of Shakti, complex. The way of the Jiva, Anvavupai, most complex. So what is the way of Shakti basically? What is the problem? They analyze the problem in this way. What happens, you know, if you try to settle down, I have understood Vedanta, I am Brahman. If you try to settle down there, what will happen? Thoughts keep coming to the mind. Simple. Swami Prabhavananda Ji in his book, Sermon on the Mount According to Vedanta, when he's talking about blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall sh uh, see God. He says, try this. What do you mean by pure of, of heart? How do I know I'm not pure of heart? Try this. Make up your mind. I'm going to think about God. Only about God and nothing else. In whatever form you're used to. Settle down seriously, quietly and try it. Within a minute, within a minute, within two minutes, you will find other thoughts crowding. Almost all people have this experience. This is the sign of the impurity of the heart. So they, they, they call it ashud, they call it vikalpa in Kashmiri Shaivism. Vikalpa means thought construct. The mind starts chattering away. Very natural. It's the very life of the mind to think. So thoughts keep coming. Vikalpa. Now what is the way in Kashmiri Shaivism? They say, all right. These vikalpas are there and you cannot remove them. Now the way is generate what they call shuddha vikalpa, a pure thought construct. What is the nature of the pure thought construct? The same as the, the original teaching of Kashmiri Shaivism, non-dualism. I am the limitless Shiva. Abhinava Gupta, great Kashmiri Shaivite teacher. He says, vishvotirna vishvatmacha. Transcending this physical universe and the essence immanent in this physical universe, that Shiva I am. This will be the st structure of the pure thought construct. Now the question is, this pure thought construct, can it really capture 
uh, Shiva, the ultimate reality? Can you think your way to realization? And the answer is no, you cannot. No thought can reveal the ultimate reality. Uh, Abhinav Gupta gives a classic example. He says, you might as well ask a, you know, a pot kept out in the bright sunlight. Ask the pot, illumine the sun. Impossible. It's a crazy idea. It's just the opposite. It's the sun which illumines the pot. The pot has absolutely no way of illumining the sun. And neither is it necessary to. Similarly to say, the mind can capture my ultimate reality, Shiva. It won't work. Then what will this Shuddha Vikalpa do? What is the purpose of this practice? Two, two things. I will quickly race through this. I think we have got a little Q&A afterwards. So if you have got doubts, you can ask that. So it goes like this. Two functions. Negative function, positive function. The negative function of this practice is the illusion of duality is to be removed. Abhinava Gupta says, Swarupa Akhyati Matra Dvaitam. He says, Dvaita Adivasam Swarupa Akhyati Matram. But what it means is, this experience of a dualistic universe is only due to the non-apprehension of our non-dual self. It is there, but we don't see it as it is. That's why we experience this. So this Shuddha Vikalpa, this practice, will only remove this error. It will, look at the difference. It will not catch hold of Shiva. It will remove the ignorance that we are not Shiva. That's the negative function of the Shuddha Vikalpa. What is the actual practice? The practice has three aspects. Mantra Shakti, number one, the power of the mantra. The second one is called Bhavana, Sattarka, that's a technical term. Bhavana, which means meditation. And the third one is Shuddha Vidya, pure knowledge, what they call enlightenment. So the practice has three aspects, mantra, meditation, enlightenment. How does the mantra work? It works like this. As Swami Vivekananda said, the Divine Mother is everything. What do you mean by everything? There are two aspects of everything. Forms. What you experience in the universe. And names. The conceptualization that we do in our minds about those objects. Whatever you experience is called Rupa. And the way you grasp it in your mind, the conceptualization here, the language used for that is called Nama. So the Divine Mother is both Rupa and Nama. The thing itself and the concept in your mind. The concept is always expressed in language. So the Divine Mother manifests herself in language. So the entirety of language is generated by letters. I'm going fast now. The entirety of language is generated by letters. And the set of letters, the Sanskrit alphabet, is called Matrika. Matrika. So this Matrika is none other than the Divine Mother, none other than Shakti, manifested as language. And language expresses or enables us to experience the universe of forms. Lang this physical, the universe and our language are coextensive. I remember one of the greatest philosophers of the 20th century, Wittgenstein, in his classic gnomic text, Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, he begins almost at the very beginning, he says, the limits of my language are the limits of the universe. Universe and language, name and form, they go together. Now, we do not recognize the Divine Mother in all these forms. And we think language is ordinary. This ordinary language ties us to this ordinary world. We do not see the divinity in either of them. What the mantra shakti does is, it says that language is divine. And to see the divinity in language, to use the divinity inherent, divine power, shakti inherent in the very letters, each letter has a divine shakti inherent in it. So mantras are generated out of these um, these letters and the entirety of the Sanskrit alphabet it means that I am that limitless consciousness how does it do so? it's incredible we never think about that way if, if you know Sanskrit a little bit also it will make it will be amazing to you but even without that we can grasp see here is a secret in the Sanskrit alphabet 
also in many Indian alphabets. It starts with a. Uh. The first is not a, it's a. Uh. The pr most primitive sound is a. Uh. And the last one is ha. Huh. If you see the whole alphabet, it starts with a uh and ends with ha. Huh. Now, a uh is the mantra for Shiva. According to the science of mantras in, in the Shakto, in the way of Shakti. A uh is the mantra for Shiva, is the Bija mantra for Shiva. And ha uh is the mantra for Vimarsha Shakti, the Divine Mother. And in between these two letters, a uh and ha, uh, the last one, in between are all the other letters. All letters. A uh and ha, uh, if you put them together, and the dot is put there, it is called aham. And those who know Sanskrit are a little bit also. You know what aham means? I. I. The word for I, the vertical I, the, the word for I, the subject, me, I, is aham. And they show that in between, in aham, is all other letters of the language. And from those letters comes all language, all names. And those names represent the entire universe. So the word aham, which means you, the you or I, the person, it includes in it the source of the entire universe. That's the way they think about it. So all names corresponding to all entities in the universe are encompassed in that word aham. The word aham, I, the mystical meaning of that is pure consciousness, Shiva, starting with a, coming down to her in the entire process, manifests as everything in the universe, the cause of the universe, the subtle universe, and the physical universe. But the Swami said that the four salutations, so Shiva manifests as the cause, as the subtle universe, as the gross universe, and does so by the power of Shakti, the Divine Mother. So, Aham, it sounds complicated, but actually there is only one idea going through all of it. That language is mystical. It's, it runs much deeper than what we think. We use it for referring to this world. And they say using language in its ordinary sense traps us in samsara. Using language in this mystical sense will free us from samsara. Now the Guru gives you a mantra. Like we have all got, most of us. And that mantra is generated from this matrika, from this set of mystical letters. And this mantra refers to one or the other forms of the Divine Mother. In some form, the Ishta Devata. It could be male, it could be female, it could be beyond gender. And as we repeat that mantra, the mind and the personality becomes divinized. And the divinity inherent in that mantra reveals itself. The repetition of the mantra goes into the second stage, which is called bhavana. Bhavana is a meaning, there's, there's no good English equivalent for it. It means uh, meditation. Abhinava Gupta says, what is meditation? He says, it's a kind of imagination. The difference is, what already exists and yet is not evident to me, is made evident by this process. There's a difference between imagination and meditation. Imagination is when I imagine Harry Potter or Superman or Batman. It's a product of the artist's imagination, author's imagination. It's not really out there. But Bhavana is something already here. We don't see it. The mystic sees it and gives us a practice so that it can become clear to us. So one translation was creative imagination to grasp an already existing but unseen reality. But the word Bhavana. And then it manifests itself as our real nature, as the Ishta Devata, that is called Shuddha Vidya, the third aspect of the practice. That, and then what happens is the difference between knower, known, and known, uh, and, and knowledge, knower, known, and knowledge, it disappears into one uniform awareness. That is the realization of I am Shiva, or in Advaita Vedanta, Aham Brahmasmi. I think I've run out of time. So, uh, I will conclude here. Shakti, is, uh, they, they call it Shakta Upai in uh, Kashmiri Shaivism, a very powerful means to enlightenment, especially relevant for us, because actually many of us, we practice that. We don't often speak about it, 
But this is, in a sense, the science behind the practice that we all do. I will conclude with the peace chant. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Rupanam